So we've got Fear the Walking Dead Season 7 Episode 10. This episode is called Morning Cloak. And if you haven't seen the episode yet and you don't want to get spoiled for you, do not watch this review because this review is going to contain full spoilers for the episode. You've been warned, but honestly, nothing really happens. <laughs> Last week, AMC dropped both episode 9 and episode 10 on the same night. I watched 9 first, did my review, then I watched 10. As I was watching 9, I was thinking, will I do 9 and 10 review together? Because not a lot's happening in 9, but then I said, who knows, episode 10 might be a big episode. But now after watching them both, I probably should just do one big review for both of them. Because for the most part, nothing really happens in either episode. I lean more towards enjoying this one over episode 10 because or over episode 9 because at least this one feels like it done something for the story episode 9 felt like nothing really happened nothing progressed the story and so far after watching 9 and 10 i am praying the back half is not going to be this bad oh because like episode 9 10 were not good episodes i'm hoping that they just drop these two together just because like okay these are two bad episodes let's get these out of the way and then we'll go into whatever great stuff happens because after watching these two i honestly don't see the point in these episodes i don't i wonder if it's a case of they can only think of 14 episodes and then they had to do 16 so they just put these two crap episodes out i'm really hoping 11 onwards is really good because the whole marketing of the season was or the back half of the season is alicia and strand are going to war but then after these two episodes it's like what the fuck's even the point in this storyline because nothing's happening we find out that strand has been collecting butterflies and he sends out this kid to go out and collect all these butterflies who then this kid runs into charlie brings charlie back to the compound and i like most people was expecting charlie to die this season just because when i heard madison was coming back and thinking okay well alicia has kind of forgived charlie for killing nick but Will Madison forgive Charlie? I don't know. It's her child. It is different than your brother. It's your actual child being killed by someone and then having to forgive that killer. I don't really know. Personally, it's similar to the whole Maggie and Negan situation where I'm looking at Maggie and saying, Oh, forgive Negan. Here, it's it's pretty much the same situation. You're like, Oh, forgive Charlie. It's the world you live in. But I also don't like charlie so it's it's different in that way because you don't i have no attachment to charlie she could die in the next episode and i honestly wouldn't care madison's a character who i've always loved i was so sad when they killed her off i'm thankful that she's finally coming back i've been saying for years please bring madison back so i would love to see madison come back and just kill charlie for killing her son because in the trailer for this season we did see she's got a tattoo on her wrist of both of her kids names so she can be devastated when she finds out that nick is dead and i hope she does end up killing charlie for her but this episode is actually just kind of a like a small romantic comedy storyline in Fear the Walking Dead. We actually get find out that Charlie's 13. I always expected Charlie to be older. I only found out the actress. I googled it. Once she said she was 13, I said, how old is the actress? So I googled it. She's actually 15. I always thought she was older, but no, she's only 15. But they're trying to say that her character is 13. But then she they go on throughout the episode giving a love story with her. And this guy is 15. So I was thinking, why not just make her 15? I don't think anyone knew her age before this. I wouldn't have cared if they just said she was 15 too. So then they got two 15 year olds in a romantic relationship. But no, they didn't. They're kind of just going around. They're going to, to some location to try and find a part of a elevator. So because Strand's elevator is broken. So they're going there to find it. Along the way, they go off and do all this stuff. You see this guy's name. I think his name was Ali. They go to a bowling alley. You see a photo of him and his dad. They kind of bowl for a little bit. They just kind of... Are going about and then they get to the building. The hooded group who were in episode set or in episode nine against Alicia were also there. The kid then tricks the hooded group into getting all of them killed by walkers, which I found was a bit, bit of a stupid way to die. Not only are they so far into the apocalypse that they're dying by someone opening the door and a bunch of walkers coming out and killing them, but also, how did they fall for that? It's just, it's just baffling baffling how stupid these people died that these are meant to be kind of an antagonistic group for our group throughout this back half of the season they're meant to be a group that we're pretty much meant to fear because we saw alicia who's a badass survivor fearing these group and then we see them being taken down like this just makes them look like it just doesn't make them look threatening the way they obviously are meant to be it's just very disappointing that to see them die so easily but then they get into the building 
the radiation oh charlie's like oh i lost my mask so the guy then takes off his mask even though they had seen someone return to the tower from this building poison radiation the guy's like oh well if you're exposed i'll be exposed to very very odd i don't understand that at all but then charlie reveals to ali the whole plan the fact that she was only brought there so she can get morgan's group out like um grace the kid all these people her only the only reason she's there was not to join strand but was to actually get the people out but then when she gets there she's like i want to stay here i don't want to go back i I'm sick of fighting, which is very understandable, not only because she's a child, but I think anyone in the world will go to Charlie's or um, Strand's place and goes, yeah, you know what, I'm just sick of fighting, and it completely makes sense why she's all for that, but I can't remember why Strand is against her, why he doesn't want her to join in the first place, because from memory, from like season six, when they were in that junk area, her and Strand got on pretty well, so I don't know why Strand does not want her to join, but anyways, then there, he leaves, he traps Charlie in the elevator because Charlie reveals what the plan is. And then Charlie's screaming, he comes back to save Charlie. They kiss later on in the episode, but they do. So there is a relationship there, but then Charlie passes out. It's revealed that Charlie is now dying of radiation. For some reason, she's dying of radiation, but the radiation that she have has cannot be passed on to everyone else because no one's wearing masks when they go in to see her. They're just going in freely. That makes no sense because I imagine she would have got the radiation from the zombies there which means it can be passed from them but how come it can't be passed from her to them I, I it could be very simple i honest, don't understand why it's not being passed to them even later on in the episode when ali and uh charlie kiss why is not being passed there honestly it's just it's just bad i really just really did not like this episode it even goes on Char ali sets all the butterflies loose in the in a room charlie goes in as a birthday present they kiss that's where the kiss happens um ali then agrees to shut off the light at the top of the building so that morgan and the group can come in and get the people out he was going to follow through what charlie was meant to do howard then comes up and he kills ali in the moment because he finds out what ali was going to do didn't feel anything there. I wasn't really a big fan of the character. I wasn't expecting him to carry on. I was more disappointed with the guy last week. The deaf character. Whatever his name was. I was disappointed with his death. I was disappointed with the death of the guy in episode 1 of the season. Ali. I didn't feel something. Charlie looks devastated. But I honestly didn't really feel anything. John Dory Sr. seems to be on Strand's side. He said he was faking it. He's messing. But I don't really know he kind of gives me the impression that he's kind of happy he's he's a sheriff again he seems quite happy with what he's doing very odd to see him because i recently just watched dexter season two and he's a major character in dexter season two i was watching him like this guy seems very very familiar so i googled him it's john dory senior they look very very different with the big beard but you can tell he's got the same mannerisms and both it's quite cool to see him and other things but then june said kind of says that she is in charge here like the uh, strand needs her strands i'm gonna kick her out only doctor around so if you want her to stay charlie's gonna stay and charlie's gonna be taken care of by june i imagine charlie's gonna die just before madison comes back i'd like to see madison and charlie kind of see each other because they did have a relationship at the start of season four but i'd like to see them reunite just because this is the person who killed her son but i don't know what's gonna happen i don't know what's gonna happen if charlie's going to die soon why I, I really don't understand why no one's wearing masks around charlie because of radiation we literally had a pandemic where people have to wear masks to stop the spread of disease, diseases fear the walking dead would have been postponed because of that so it's not like they're unaware of a global crisis but i don't i don't understand why these people don't need to wear masks to stop the spread of whatever disease and it's not like they can't find a mask because they go out wearing masks it's just it is baffling to me i, I don't understand why they're not it could be a small nitpick. There probably was explained in a few episodes prior, but I honestly don't understand why they're all so freely that when they've seen people dying of it in the exact same building and it's not being exposed to everyone else. But if you want to hear my thoughts on episode 11, I actually don't know what the plot is for episode 11. I haven't seen a trailer or anything. Hopefully Dwight shows back up again. From memory, he's with Morgan. I kind of like to see Dwight and Sherry. I like those two together, so I'd like to see those two return in episode 11. But if you want to hear my thoughts... On episode 11, whenever my review drops, make sure to click the subscribe button so you can go back and hear my thoughts on that. And as always, thanks for watching.